KC7 Bangor. From the Great North Woods to the Rockbound Coast and streaming live in HD worldwide at FoxBangor.com, more people choose Good Morning Maine. Hello everyone, today on Good Morning Maine, big staffing cuts for a Maine company that produced test supplies during the pandemic. Plus, we'll join the celebration as 25 people became new American citizens. And we'll also hit the trail to Piscataquis Valley, where vintage snowmobiles were on display over the weekend. Good morning, and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. And I'm Craig Colson. Thank you for so, so much tuning in on this Monday morning. We're sitting over here on the interview set doing something a little different. They're working on our other set today. You know, the danger is we're sitting on a couch, and I just kind of want to lean back and That's grab my blankie and go right back to sleep. I know. But, I feel the same way. Yeah. And it's a Monday, too, so I, we are we woke up feeling that way. We'll see if we can get through it all. Yeah. And guess what? We had a beautiful day yesterday. It looks like today uh, a little less beautiful, I know. <laughs> depending on how Making you look at it. Making up for how much of a nice Sunday we yeah. had. Might get a little snow today, maybe even a little bit of rain, um, just enough to mess things up, but it shouldn't be a major, major storm. Just enough means. to mess just things up. Just enough to mess things up. We're good at that. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Devin Biggs with the forecast. And thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Happy Monday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. All right, here we are this morning. We have a few alerts in effect. This right here is a winter weather advisory that's posted for the northern parts of the state until 5 p.m. later this evening. We're going to be watching for some accumulating snow in a few spots that may cause some travel issues. And wind advisories posted, too, until 5 p.m. We will be dealing with gusty winds, possibly up to 40 miles per hour in a few spots, so we'll need to be careful with that. Further down toward the south, here we are. We also have a gale warnings up until midnight later on tonight because of the winds causing the ocean to get a little active in a few spots and a small spot under a small craft advisory that's right there and that's up until midnight as well. So moving forward again we have snow tracking in from the north going toward the south. This is courtesy of an area of low pressure that's off for the north and east. So it's going to be moving in in an unusual direction. So it's, this is pretty much going to be sitting here for a few days. Now will be giving us opportunities for rain and snow showers in a few areas. So the winds will be an issue at times today. It'll be out of the northwest with gusts up to 20 to 40 miles per hour. It will start to relax especially as we head towards the daytime tomorrow. We are only forecast for the rest of the daytime period. It will be windy with a mostly cloudy sky. Chances for a few rain and snow showers with temperatures in the 30s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Craig and Emma. Thank you, Devin. A man from Massachusetts was killed Sunday following a crash on the main turnpike. State police say 22-year-old Kevin Mahoney was traveling south when he suddenly veered off the highway and struck a tree. It happened around 8 o'clock Sunday morning. Officials say Mahoney was the only person in the vehicle and he died at the scene. They suspect excessive speed was a contributing factor. Well, good. Uh, moving on now to other news. Um, there was an icy crash yesterday morning in Brewer that sent two people to the hospital. Sunday morning around 6.59 a.m., the Brewer Fire Department was called to the area of North Main Street for a two-vehicle accident right at the uh, intersection of State and North Main. Two people were transported to the local hospitals with minor injuries. According to the department's Facebook post, the department would like to thank Northern Light Medical Transport, Brewer Police, and Union Street Towing for also... Uh, adding some assistance at the scene there. It was kind of a grisly crash, but fortunately only minor injuries. The fire marshal's office returned to the scene of a fire that destroyed a cabin in Rockwood. It happened Friday on the shore of Moosehead Lake. The Rockwood Fire Department says no one was there when the fire broke out and no one was injured. Flames were shooting from the structure when they arrived and there was little they could do to save the building. Fire crews had to pump water from the lake in order to douse the flames. Still no word, though, on what might have sparked the fire. A Skowhegan man has been indicted by the Somerset County Grand Jury for attempted murder. 43-year-old Neil McLean was indicted on two counts of arson and one count of attempted murder. Police say the incidents happened back in October of last year. Two others were arrested after police searched a home in Palmyra in October. 40-year-old Joseph Quimby and 44-year-old Jessica Quimby were both indicted on drug trafficking charges, a lawful operation of a, of a methamphetamine lab, and drug possession charges also. They were also indicted for endangering the welfare of a child. Police say when they searched two buildings on the Wyman Road, they seized fentanyl, methamphetamine, suboxone strips, two guns, and other drug-related items, along with some cash. 
The Maine Department of Health and Human Services was also called in because children were present at the time. The director of an Augusta homeless shelter has been ordered to serve one year in jail for sexually abusing a minor. 51-year-old Jeffrey Tyler, the former facility director of Bread of Life Ministries in Augusta, pleaded guilty to one count of sexual abuse of a minor. The victim says Tyler began sexually abusing her when she was 14 years old and it continued for several years. He was arrested at the ministry in Augusta in September of 2019. Tyler was sentenced to five years with all but one year suspended. In other news, a Maine-based company recently delivered unfortunate news to a large number of its employees. Our David Ledford has the details. It's pretty devastating to the area. Our area could use the, the jobs. Puritan Medical Products, based in Guilford, has announced that 251 employees at its two Pittsfield locations have been furloughed. The company opened the facilities after the onset of the pandemic hiring hundreds of employees in the process. And officials say the company is the largest manufacturer of medical swabs in the country, which have been used to test for the COVID-19 virus. According to the company, the furloughs are a result of a decrease in demand for swabs. But town officials say the change is nothing new. The town of Pittsfield, as well as the region, is very resilient. Um, we've been through many closures, layoffs, and furloughs before. It is to be ex unfortunately expected in a community that has two massive large plants with huge uh, numbers of people employed there. Puritan also recently laid off 57 temporary employees last month at their Tennessee location. However, representatives say the Pittsfield furloughs are not permanent and hope to bring back all affected employees within six months. One resident of nearby Palmyra says that in the meantime, the community will still feel the impact. I worked for the town of Pittsfield in the past and was here during the whole process of rebuilding and getting it up and running. And uh, there's a lot of people that I know that work there for that process too. So I have some friends that work there. The grocery store is going to be affected drastically by it. Uh, all of the local businesses will be. Puritan representatives say the company will continue insurance benefits for the furloughed employees and has opened an employee assistance center in Pittsfield to aid workers. In Pittsfield, David Ledford, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. Faculty, students, and veterans joined together at the University of Maine in Augusta to honor military service members who have made the ultimate sacrifice. We talked to the mother of a fallen soldier who's working to make sure her son's memory lives on. Ariel, I have the honor and privilege of carrying a stone for Army Captain Christopher J. Sullivan. Army Sergeant Nicholas A. Robinson. That story I will keep with me forever. The University of Maine partnered with the Summit Project and Blue Star Mothers to recognize 20 service members from across the state who lost their lives while actively serving. Both organizations support recognition projects dedicated to veterans. The Gold Star families and what, what they've lost is, is everything, you know. So in order to, to take a little bit of the time out of my life um, to show them the appreciation. Tribute stones with the names of fallen soldiers were each placed in a display case to symbolize the continued memory of those who served in an effort to ensure their names are never forgotten. Blue Star Mothers work together to help mothers grieving after losing a child to active duty. Susan Stout speaks on how ceremonies like this help her family after the loss of her son in 2009. It, it means everything. His name has been spoken. He's been um, honored and respected by those who have been here today. We want to remember them. We want to remember their life and their story. The president of the University of Maine says this ceremony represents the university well as the institution works to recognize student and community veterans. I will say that it's a, a small piece of what we can do to just help remember those fallen. The Summit Project Honor Case is currently displayed at the Michael Clare Center for the next two months. In Augusta, A.J. Douglas, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. The time now is 6.09. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, it was like stepping back in time for snowmobile fans. We'll check out pieces of history that were on display in Dover Foxcroft. But first, another check of your weather forecast. It looks like we could see a little rain and snow today. The highs will be warm, right around 37 degrees. Chance for a little more snow overnight with lows dropping down into the 20s. Tomorrow, yes, more rain and snow. The highs around 36. Start your outdoor adventures in Orno this weekend. The Easter Maine Sportsman Show is back. 
Friday through Sunday at the University of Maine Fieldhouse. This show is for everyone who loves the great outdoors, even kids like me. Fishing, hunting, or camping, it's all here. See boats, dogs, and fishing lures. The displays are really cool. You can shoot a bow and arrow or watch dogs jump in the pool. Find more info online. Come to the Easter Maine Sportsman Show this weekend. Then get outdoors with your family. Hi, I'm Angelina Mucci. And I'm Andy Mucci of Family Fun Bowl and Center. When we want to know the weather, we go to foxbangor.com. Celebrating our 50th anniversary year, Family Fun Bowling Center has 20 lanes of 10-pin bowling at its best. We love our pets, but we don't always love their hair, which is why we made Bounce Pet Hair and Lint Guard. With three times the pet hair fighting ingredients, just one sheet helps remove pet hair from your clothes. Looking good starts in the dryer with Bounce Pet. All the nonsense. Simba, Simba. Meets no nonsense. I don't buy it. Judge Judy. Weekdays at 5 on ABC7. This week, take a peek at how they spin in Spain, oh Hungary, oh Denmark, oh Romania, and Greece. Captain Van is running around all over the world. I mean, he was okay, but he didn't pull any beards, did he? Oh, it's, oh, it's, real. it's real around the world. Weekdays at 7 on ABC7. Welcome back, everyone. State Representative Amy Roeder of Bangor has proposed legislation that would protect workers from retaliation when they're asked when asked their employer for flexible work schedules. Representative Roeder said, quote, this bill came to fruition after I learned that a constituent of mine faced retaliation for requesting a flexible work schedule that resulted in him leaving his job of 15 years. While employers do not have to agree to a flexible work schedule request, they should not be allowed to discipline those who are just trying to balance work alongside their many responsibilities, including finding child care and caring for themselves or a loved one who is ill. There are currently no provisions in Maine state law offering this protection for workers. The legislature's Labor and Housing Committee intends to hold a public hearing on that bill in the coming weeks. A plan to require drivers to clear snow and ice from their vehicles is getting some big support. Drivers are currently only required to remove ice and snow from their windows and windshields. It's perfectly legal to drive around with a foot of snow on your roof of your vehicle in Maine. Lawmakers want to amend Maine's unsecured load law to include snow and ice in the language. Minor amounts of snow and ice do not constitute a violation. The past proposals have failed but state police say they can enforce this law. And here's why. This proposal does not require motorists pulling off on the side of a road to remove snow from their vehicle during a snow event. So if you go home today and you don't have time to clear the snow, you will not be vi uh, in violation. We still hope you will do that. State police say enforcement would be a common sense approach. Some loggers, though, expressed concern about safety for truckers forced to climb their trucks to remove the snow. The Department of Public Safety estimates that up 30 crashes since November were caused by snow or ice falling off one vehicle and landing on another. The committee is still debating the bill. Northern Light Health President and CEO Timothy Dentry has announced that Northern Light Eastern Maine Medical Center's president is stepping down. Randall Larry has been with the hospital since 2019, leading the medical center through the coronavirus pandemic. According to Northern Light Health, O'Leary has plans to head back to his home state of Michigan, where he has been named president of the Henry Ford Health Wyandotte Hospital. With O'Leary's departure at the end of March, Dentry will assume the leadership responsibilities for Northern Light EMMC, in addition to his role in Northern Light Health as CEO, until a replacement can be found. For the first time in three years, a citizenship ceremony took place in person at the City of Bangor's Federal Building. Our Matthew Jaroncic introduces us to the newest Mainers. Many smiles, tears of happiness, and pictures were on display inside a U.S. District Court room as 25 individuals were officially introduced as Maine's newest American citizens. Honestly, it just feels surreal. Like, I didn't believe that it's happening, and uh, 
I didn't think that I'm going to experience so many emotions, but I couldn't stop crying all the way here. We live about two hours away. People originally from the Democratic Republic of Congo, Cameroon, and Ukraine took the oath of allegiance and were called by Judge Lance Walker to receive their certificate to prove U.S. citizenship. Walker also gave recipients advice on what they can do to be the best citizens possible. So the duty of a lifetime falls to you now, our newest citizens. Be well informed, start a business, continue your education, practice your religion, love your neighbor. Originally from the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Julie Kintiba cannot express how much this opportunity means to her. I thank the USA to welcome me this country for everything they do for us in this country. Uh, I'm very grateful for the USA. Churchill Elangway Preston came to the United States two decades ago from Cameroon as a student. Now owning his own coffee company and officially a U.S. citizen, he couldn't be any more excited for the future. It feels great. It feels awesome. I mean, it's been 20 years, you know, it's about time. But, you know, um, living in a community where I live, in Waterville, in a state like Maine, oh my goodness, how would anyone not want to become part of a community like this? It's a beautiful community. In Bangor. Matthew Jaroncic reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Congratulations to them, something a lot of us take for granted. Well, in other news this morning, the Piscataquis Valley Fair hosted its second annual Vintage Snowmobile Day. Devin Dagnall met with an organizer to learn more about the unique event. This event is, is all about just enjoying the day with people with like-minded, you know, passion. You'll hear conversations all day long about Oh, that's a 67 and I got a 65 at the house, and that's a 79, but the 81 was faster, but it kept blowing up. So you'll hear them talking about, about their passion, you know, and it, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing to look around and see the people that you didn't know in town, they're in love with old snowmobiles. We, me and some others put together a race for two years. We did a large snowcross race and tried to bring in thousands of people. The community was, was kind of tight for it, so we didn't, it didn't uh, pan out. So we, last year we started just with what you see, just a, just a gathering of sleds and we'll do a little ride through town and uh, people enjoyed it. It rained last year, we did it anyways. We got twice as many this year. There are a few machines here that the more of the history of them in Maine was the trapping aspect. Your, your old Elands and your, uh, your old Olympics are what, you know, your trappers would have put their snowshoes on, their, their traps and their pack basket. How would you like to see this event grow? I wouldn't. No? A few more people, a few more people to enjoy the ride. But we've done the big thing. The best thing is, is it's so simple you stand around and talk. I love those old sleds. They're so cool. Yeah, and they yeah. had a beautiful day for it. Yeah, gorgeous. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, they've changed so much over the years. Now they're all high tech and fancy. And, I know. You know. I know. As are our cars. The way I, I see it, it seems like more stuff. That Something can break. to be said about the simpler. I agree. Simpler things. I but. agree. I'd, I'd buy a car with the roll-up windows still. <laughs> yeah, I right. love it. Yeah. <laughs> well, the time is now 6:18. After the break, we'll have the latest numbers on how lobster halls are faring across the state. Plus, on a similar note, we'll hear the contributions that Maine loggers made to the state's economy in 2021. Those stories and more coming up. Bath remodeling was revolutionized in this garage in 1984 when three brothers created the iconic bath fitter tub over tub process. A breakthrough then, the industry standard now for beautiful baths without the mess, stress, or high cost. A better way from bath fitter means precise measurement, the highest quality acrylic, perfect preparation, and watertight installation backed by a lifetime warranty. Bath fitter, it just fits. Visit bathfitter.com to book your free consultation. 
Why is strength training now blowing up across TikTok? Why are so many women turning to it over other exercises? This week on GMA, you'll see why. Is strength training perfect for you? Plus, Hayden Panettiere live this morning on Good Morning America. I came to play. What I about you? I came to play. You bet your life. I did my own hair. You got me? All we need is glue and hair. <laughs> Wear big laughs. Yes! Meet fast-paced fun. Weekdays at 10 on ABC7. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. Well, as many folks know, it was a tough year for Maine lobstermen, who reported hauling in a smaller catch than last year. The industry battled surging fuel and bait prices, rebukes from key retailers, and the looming possibility of new restrictions to protect whales. Despite Maine lobster exploding in value in recent years, due in part to growing international demand, the industry brought about 98 million pounds of lobster to the docks, worth about $389 million. That was more than 11% less than the previous year, in which they harvested more than 110 million pounds worth of lobster, worth more than $740 million. The per pound value of lobster also fell from an all-time high in 2021. Maine loggers, meanwhile, contributed an estimated $582 million to the state's economy in 2021. That's according to a new study just released by the University of Maine and the Margaret Chase Smith Policy Center. According to the study, logging supported 5,600 Maine jobs, either directly or indirectly. The industry generated $312 million in labor income and pumped an estimated $27 million into state and local tax coffers. However, the study shows the industry is facing mounting challenges, including rampant inflation, worker shortages, and declining profits. Executive Director of Professional Logging Contractors of Maine, Dana Doran, says the study shows what Maine stands to lose if the industry is unable to overcome those challenges. A tasty tradition is back and in full swing for the 15th year in a row. It's Maine Restaurant Week, and eateries across the state are participating by crafting specialty dishes and menus to appeal to customers during a traditionally slow season for restaurants. Co-creator and organizer of the event, Jillian Britt, says the delicious celebration of Maine food serves an important purpose. Winter's a slow time of year for many businesses, obviously, and you look around, like even the weather today, you know, it definitely impacts the bottom line. And so by creating a promotion, you created something that encourages that spending and helps the economy. It's like Christmas for some, 12 days of dining out. The event kicked off on March 1st and will run through the 12th of the month. There are three participating locations in Bangor, one in Old Town and four in Camden. To learn more and find out all of the participating restaurants, visit MainRestaurantWeek.com. I think in Bangor Boy. it's the Sea Dog, Nocturnum, and 11th Central. Old Town is Pepper's Landing. Yeah. So, yeah, a couple yeah. places here and there, plenty in Camden. Mostly Southern Maine, though. It's a lot in Portland. So It's making me, look, making me hungry just looking at it. Though. I know, that's yeah. the problem. Yeah. Speaking of Portland, how was your trip south over the weekend? It was lovely. Yeah, it was you picked lovely. a great weekend to do yeah. it, huh? I found yeah. an affordable inn um, in Kennebunkport. And it had a hot tub and it was on the beach, so I can't complain. Not bad. A good, yeah. day, good, day to, a good way to spend a snowy day. To on hunker Saturday. down. Yeah, yeah, I didn't do much on Saturday. Yeah. I booked, I didn't plan on spending the night on Saturday, but I had to because of that weather. I stayed home on Saturday and cleaned the house. So good that's for what you. I did. But it felt good getting all that out of the way. Good for then you. Yesterday was just a beautiful, beautiful sunny day. Yeah. You know, very nice. Yeah. And now it looks like we might have a little more snow in the forecast. I know. I missed all so. my cleaning over the weekend, so it's good that we have this because it'll keep <laughs> me inside the house. Right. But on that note, let's check in with meteorologists. Devin Biggs and get a look at that forecast. All righty, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's artist trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. Or as good things rolling after this morning, a winter weather advisory is posted along the, the northeastern parts of the state until about 5 p.m. for accumulating snow. They'll be moving in from the northeast to the south and west. That may cause some travel issues in a few spots. Wind advisory is also posted in a few spots soon until 5 p.m. this evening as well. Because the gusty winds up to 40 miles per hour, that'll be possible in a few areas. We also have gale warnings up. Some of these expire at 4 
p.m. Other spots, though, as we push the map around, expiring at midnight tonight. Same with the small crowd advisory for that little spot right there. So again, the ocean will be rather active because of the gusty winds that will be setting up shop. And they're already active now. Two to ten foot wave heights being noted out there this morning. We'll see the wave heights staying rather active throughout the daytime period. With this area low pressure that's on for the north and east, that's going to be sending some snow in here this morning. With the warming temperatures, we might see this switch over to a little bit of rain from time to time as well. As all this off for the north and east continues to develop, and it's looking rather active out there. There's that area, there's that area low pressure there. It's going to be kind of sitting and spinning here for the next few days. So that's why we will have daily chances for rain and snow showers, at least for most of this week moving forward. So with that right there, other action across the Midwest showing some snow developing in areas like Wisconsin out there this morning. So futurecast moving forward, we're going to have some snow moving in today, maybe mixing in with a little bit of rain from time to time. We'll have some dry hours, maybe some sunshine peeking out as well. And then we'll press repeat, more clouds moving in, chances for snow maybe mixing in with rain from time to time as we head towards the Tuesday. And then we'll get, a, we'll get a little bit of a break. And then we press repeat again as we head towards Tuesday night into Wednesday with more waves of precipitation that will be moving in from time to time. Snow accumulations, nothing ridiculous. So you might notice a little bit more in the northern parts of the state, but not as much further down to the south. But anything that does fall will not last very long with temperatures. I'll be above freezing. Upper 30s today, rain and snow showers on the way with that northwest wind getting up to about 40 miles per hour. By tonight, 23 degrees, snow showers and breezy out there. Northwest wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour and tomorrow mid 30s rain and snow showers again north wind backing off to about five to ten miles per hour scott's recreation extended forecast mostly cloudy for the day on wednesday highs in the low 40s more rain and snow showers possible thursday highs in the low 40s upper 30s on friday with a partly cloudy sky It's spring break at Bob's, and I'm introducing my biggest, bestest backyard collection ever. Soak up the sun in outdoor furniture that comes with indoor comfort, quality, and, of course, my everyday low prices. Rock and recline on bob memory foam seating. Defy Mother Nature with weather-resistant wicker, rust-proof frames, and UV-resistant fabric. And make your backyard more fun and functional with stylish accents and accessories. You deserve a break. Spring break at Bob's Discount Furniture. Wherever you are, whether you're ready or not, it's coming with a purpose, with persistence, with the power to change the way you live. So you don't have to change the way you live. Generac Automatic Standby Generators. Control your power. Control your life. Visit Generac.com. center to serve you bangor tire has moved to herman for a bigger selection of trusted brands bangor tire has moved to herman and to better service your ride no matter the size bangor tire has moved to herman master mechanics free shuttle service and the fair deals you deserve take littlefield avenue to bangor tire beside dice arts in herman bangortire.com we're more than just a tire store there's one number you need to know. It's called Joe. Welcome back, everyone. Now to the relentless snow in parts of California. Several more feet are expected in the, in the Sierra Nevada mountains this week. Up to five feet of snow is possible, which will add to the 46 feet of snow the area has already received this winter. It comes as people are still stranded east of Los Angeles, where back-to-back -back storms brought 12 feet of snow. Crews are desperately trying to clear tons of snow from the roadways, and rescuers are trying to reach people who have been trapped and running out of supplies. Officials are warning that some people could remain trapped for at least another week. As far south as Los Angeles, I didn't realize yeah, I'm that. not going to complain about the snow anymore right, right. this winter. I guess so. Yeah. Well, now to the train derailments in Ohio. 
Yesterday, NTSB investigators ex were expected at the scene of the la latest one, excuse me, over the weekend in Springfield, Ohio. It happened just more than a month after the toxic derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. Both of those trains owned by the same company. Here's ABC's Liz Nagy. This morning, rail company Norfolk Southern faces more scrutiny over its safety record after another train derailment. This train was over 200 cars, which is 50 more cars than the East Palestine train. So the railroad's got a lot of questions they've got to answer, and they really haven't done it very well yet. Dashcam video shows the moment a Norfolk Southern train derailed in Springfield, Ohio, over the weekend. 28 of the 212 cars derailed, including four empty tankers with residual amounts of diesel exhaust fluid and common industrial products. Authorities say the crash poses no threat to the public's health. Once we got crews in there, we noticed that there was no hazards leaking, no spillage. The cause of the derailment is still under investigation. This marks Norfolk Southern's fourth train derailment in Ohio in the past five months, including the derailment in East Palestine, where a toxic waste cleanup is still underway. Since the February 3rd derailment, residents there have suffered from a range of symptoms, including headaches, anxiety, coughing, fatigue, and skin irritation. The Environmental Protection Agency has now ordered Norfolk Southern to test the area for dioxins, which can cause cancer. Safety is our number one priority. And as I stated earlier, our, our derailments, our mainline derailments are on the, on the decline. According to the Federal Railroad Administration, Norfolk Southern transports goods across nearly 20,000 miles of rail in 22 states and Washington, D.C. New legislation proposed by a bipartisan group of senators would require rail companies to notify state emergency officials if they're transporting hazardous materials. Shouldn't take a rail disaster to get us working together like that, and that's what we're going to be doing. On Thursday, Norfolk Southern CEO is set to testify in front of Congress about those recent derailments. Well, meanwhile, the 2024 race for the White House continues to take shape. Former President Trump is vowing to keep campaigning even if he's indicted in any of the multiple investigations he's facing. Meanwhile, announcements this weekend from two people thought to be running. One is in the others and the other is out is what I'm trying to say. ABC's Lindsay Watts has the latest from Washington. This morning, we're getting a clearer picture of the 2024 presidential race. I am your warrior. I am your justice. And for those who have been wronged and betrayed, I am your retribution. Former President Donald Trump speaking at the Conservative Political Action Conference, telling reporters he's in even if he's indicted. This as he faces state and federal investigations over his finances, classified documents, and the January 6th Capitol attack. Oh, absolutely. I wouldn't even think about leaving. One of his biggest challenges expected to come from Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. DeSantis hasn't officially announced his campaign yet, but he's currently on a book tour with stops planned this week in key states Iowa and Nevada. We have a big problem with the federal establishment in Washington. Yesterday, Maryland's former governor announcing he won't seek the Republican nomination. Larry Hogan saying a crowded field could help Trump win. Meantime, Democrat Marianne Williamson announcing she will run again. The self-help author spoke exclusively to ABC's Jonathan Carl. I don't see myself as running against Joe Biden. I see this campaign as challenging a system. As for Biden, at age 80, he's the oldest serving president in U.S. history, no, but says he will run again. Uh, my intention is from, has been, been from the beginning to run, but there's too many other things I have to finish in the near term before I start a campaign. Also officially in the race, former South Carolina governor and U.N. ambassador Nikki Haley. Haley attended CPAC last week as well, and while she saw some support, she was also heckled by Trump supporters. Lindsay Watts, ABC News, Washington. The United Nations agreeing on a historic treaty protecting biodiversity in the high seas. The treaty is a legal framework that protects a third of the world's oceans and invests more money into marine conservation. Talks about internationally protecting marine life started back in 2004, and UN officials finally struck a deal this Saturday in New York. Currently, only about 1% of high seas are protected, and climate change-related phenomena such as pollution, ocean acidification, and human activities like overfishing are said to pose a growing threat. 
Back in December, the UN pledged to conserve biodiversity in 30% of the world, in the water and on land. A UN spokesperson saying this most recent high seas treaty will be vital in helping achieve that goal. I like the sound of that. I know. Yeah. Still to come here on the second half of our show, we'll have all the latest Bears, internet the stories, and internet entertainment <laughs> stories out of Hollywood. Place debut internet, the entertainment, <laughs> you know, that's what the Same internet's for these for days, a lot yeah. of us. We'll have that and a lot more coming up as Good Morning Maine continues. Tony freaking Knox, why are you sitting around the camp? Sun is shining, birds are chirping, put down them fiddleheads, and let's get over to A&G shooting. They got pistols, rifles, all kinds of boomsticks. They even got some flamethrowers for them brown tail moths. While you're at it, flip over them couch cushions and grab yourself some quarters for that wicked cool arcade. They're located right off the highway in Fairfield, right on Redneck Row, right between the truck stop and that big green tractor place. Easy in, easy out, slicker than owl crap through a funnel. So get over to A&G and tell them Bub sent ya. Every night is pizza night at Dragonfire Pizza from wings, salads, and sides to our specialty wood-fired pizzas. You'll find everything you need to satisfy any craving by the slice or by the pie. A little slice of heaven is waiting for you at Dragonfire Pizza, Mill Mall, Ellsworth. Whenever Maine Wood Floors wants to know the weather, they log on to foxbangor.com. Whether you're searching to add beauty with a new hardwood floor or need to restore your old one, Maine Wood Floors is your hardwood flooring expert in Midcoast, Maine. Every year, tens of thousands of older Mainers are abused or taken advantage of, usually by a trusted family member. Don't sign away your home, even if promised you can still live there. Don't hand over your checkbook or credit card. Don't sign legal papers like a loan document or power of attorney without talking to a lawyer first. Protect yourself, your assets, your independence. Free, confidential legal advice is just a phone call away. Call Legal Services for the Elderly. Max True Value Hardware in Unity is the best option year-round for all of your home improvement projects. Backed by one of the leading paint manufacturers in the United States, Max will color match or custom mix any color for you. We care about your pets too, carrying all of the essential pet products in our store. During those cold winters, we take the extra step to help with wood pellets ready to load on site. We also fill all size propane cylinders year-round. Max True Value Hardware, we take pride in serving our community. Let us know how we can help you today. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Well, welcome back, everyone. Today is Monday, March 6th, 2023. It's also National Oreo Cookie Day. America's number one cookie was first introduced on this date back in 1912 by the National Biscuit Company. It has been the best-selling cookie ever since. Hmm. Whether you like to dunk them, twist them, or straight up take a bite, there's no bad way to eat an Oreo. What's your favorite way to eat an Oreo? Okay. Yeah. So get this recipe. You take, you separate the cookie from the cream part. You mm -hmm. crush up the cookie. Um, maybe you add the whole thing. I don't freaking remember. Yeah. But you add cream cheese and then you put them in the fridge for a little bit. I'm mm -hmm. like paraphrasing because I don't remember this Are recipe. Are you making Oreo balls? Yeah. Yeah. And then you just dunk them in chocolate or something. Oh, they're so good. That's my yeah. favorite way to have Oreos. Yeah. Oh, I think Make that Make them might... even worse for you. That might be my them. favorite way too. Yeah. I have a hard time with Oreos. Once they're in the house, Me too. they're done. Me too. I know. Yeah. I haven't bought them for a while because of that. And one of our colleagues out there has some cookies on his desk. <laughs> and I'm <re> <laughs> I come in here in the morning and I'm like, I'm, yeah. I'm going to be... I'm not going to be a horrible coworker yeah, and steal your Don't steal those food. cookies. I will never do that, but mm -hmm. I, I may have to go buy some cookies because yeah. I'm being peer pressured just by having them in the office. I'm with you. I love a good cookie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, on this day in history, in 1836, the defenders of the Alamo fell in San Antonio following a 13-day siege against Mexican forces. In 1899, aspirin was first patented by Felix Hoffman, a pharmacist and chemist who was working for the German company Bayer. And if you learn about Bayer at all, Bayer mm -hmm. is a terrifying company. Is it really? I don't know anything about them. Terrifying company. Yeah. Um, just listen to a podcast or something yeah. about it because their roots go very far back. They make great aspirin though. Right. Yeah. In 1924, King Tut's mummy tomb was opened by the Egyptian government. And in 1964, heavyweight boxing champ Cassius Clay officially changed his name to Muhammad Ali. All right, real quickly, the birthdays today include basketball great Shaquille O'Neal is 50, rocker David Gilmore from Pink Floyd is 76, director Bob uh, Rob Reiner is 75. This is also the birthday of Michelangelo, an Italian sculptor and painter and architect who was born on this day back in 
1475. It's cool that we even know his birthday. Yeah, it's pretty right. neat. Let's throw it over to weather. We're heavy. <laughs> Recreation, New England Zorda's trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices. With locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. Alrighty, here we are this morning. We have a few alerts in effect. This right here is a winter weather advisory that's posted for the northern parts of the state until 5 p.m. later this evening. We're going to be watching for some accumulating snow in a few spots that may cause some travel issues. And wind advisories posted too until 5 p.m. We will be dealing with gusty winds, possibly up to 40 miles per hour in a few spots. So we'll need to be careful with that. Further down toward the south, here we are. We also have a gale warnings up until midnight later on tonight because of the winds causing the ocean to get a little active in a few spots and a small spot under a small craft advisory that's right there and that's up until midnight as well. So moving forward again we have snow tracking in from the north going toward the south. This is courtesy of an area of low pressure that's off for the north and east. So it's going to be moving in in an unusual direction. So it's, this is pretty much going to be sitting here for a few days. That'll be giving us opportunities for rain and snow showers in a few areas. So the winds will be an issue at times today. It'll be out of the northwest with gusts up to 20 to 40 miles per hour. It will start to relax, especially as we head towards the daytime tomorrow. We are only forecast for the rest of the daytime period. It will be windy with a mostly cloudy sky. Chances for a few rain and snow showers with temperatures in the 30s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Craig and Emma. It's a gusty one out there. Yeah. Okay, well, for the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Chris Watson. Coming for it all. Creed 3 went into the weekend looking at a projected franchise high $40 million domestic opening. I'm just getting started, little brother. It did better than that. 58.7 million bucks, good for first place, and 23 million more than Creed 2's 2018 opening gross. It's the secret universe beneath ours. Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, and Cocaine Bears left the second and third. Very good. Carry on. A sour seventh place debut for the Guy Ritchie action caper Operation Fortune, Ruse de Guerre. After 17 seasons, Rachel Ray's ending her Emmy winning daytime talk show with the final original episodes airing through the summer. Everything Everywhere All at Once, still looking like the film to beat at the Oscars next week after cleaning up at Saturday's Independent Spirit Awards, winning seven out of eight nominations, including Best Feature. And former NBA star turned pitchman Shaquille O'Neal's 51 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. Still to come here this morning, Ryan Sudol will have the latest with sports. I'm going to take a little bath. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. Find meaningful work in behavioral health care, like Shelby, who works in multiple settings caring for children with a background of trauma. I was motivated to join the behavioral health field because I had decided that I was going to advocate for children with similar backgrounds to my own. I find that the most rewarding part of my job as a behavioral health professional is the emotional gratification in seeing my clients succeed. Visit mainjobs.care slash box to learn more and make an impact through a compassionate career. Bath fitter is a better way to remodel your tub. Precise measuring means the perfect fit. The bath fitter tub over tub process means no mess or stress. A custom made tub and seamless wall mean a watertight fit. Premium acrylic means it lasts a lifetime. And all this together means a great value. Bath fitter, it just fits. Visit bathfitter.com to book your free consultation. When Dover Audiology wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. Come to Dover Audiology and find out where people from Kittery to Eastport go to get their hearing aids. Knowledgeable, friendly, and reasonable, Dover Audiology is your best place for hearing solutions. Pat's Pizza in Holden is not just a restaurant that serves delicious food and pizza. They also have an adjacent party and event room. Consider having your birthday or office party at Pat's Pizza. They have indoor golf, a pro shop, and a beautiful nine-hole golf course. Pat's Pizza, Holden. Put a little more cash in your bank. Save money with half-off deals at foxbangor.com. Hey everybody, Ryan Sudol here. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's start on the hardwood. Two gold ball games down, eight more to go on Monday and Tuesday. And on Tuesday, Dexter Girls Hoops will play in their first state title game since 2017. Their stingy defense and constant support from their community.
made it all possible. It's kind of unbelievable, but I know that we've worked like really, really hard for it. So I know that like all of our work's paying off. Dexter girls basketball is back in the state final after six years with a shot at winning their first gold ball in nearly two decades. It feels amazing. In 2017, I watched and I'm very excited to be doing it myself. Junior Maisie Peach saw that game too. Then and now, it's personal. I watched my sister play in the 2007 state game, so it feels really good. that has been a big dream, really important, so I look forward to playing there when I lose. The Tigers were the top seed in C North, and they played like it, especially in the title game against PVHS where they held the Howlers to just 31 points. They have a lot of length, so obviously that's really, really hard to get by. But we focused on defense, and we knew like if offense is obviously going to work, our defense is going to cover for that. That defense has been constant all season long, and so is the amazing support the Tigers get from their community. So many people there at the tournament and people that I didn't even know about <laughs> congratulating us. Like you walk into Duncan or Robinson's in the morning and people will talk to you about the games and they're just really supportive. Dexter will play Old Orchard Beach Tuesday night for the Class C crown. Not winning since 2006, the gold ball for some would span generations. It would be really crazy because that was when my mom was in high school, so it's been a really long time. We've worked really hard for this, and I think it would just mean a lot to everyone. It'd feel really good, probably one of the greatest accomplishments. I think it would be probably one of the greatest things in my life <laughs> right now. And we wish them the best of luck in that game. Let's head to the mat now. Down in Portland, the University of Southern Maine Huskies will be sending not one, but two wrestlers to the NCAA National Championships. Jake Peavy and Jake Craig have both qualified. Peavy, who hails from South China, is going for the second straight year after winning the NCAA Northeast Regionals at 285, while Craig, a 125er from Skowhegan, is just the third freshman in the program's long storied history to qualify for nationals. Needless to say, both wrestlers are excited to show off their talents next week in Roanoke, Virginia. Tons of good wrestlers down there. Um, be lying if I didn't say I was a little nervous. and. Um, but I think it's all about knowing that I'm, uh, I'm just as capable as those guys at that big stage. You realize uh, all these guys are the same as you. They're all in six different regions and they go through the same process you do to get there. So there's no need to put anyone on a pedestal or anything like that. You know, everyone that's there belongs to be there. Um, so it's definitely good to get out there. Congratulations to both of them. We wish them luck. Okay, let's go back to basketball now. On Saturday, Maine men's basketball visited UMass Lowell in the America East Tournament quarterfinals. Let's see how that turned out. Riverhawks the two seed, Black Bears the seven seed. Let's start first half with a record-breaking moment. That steal by Kellen Tynes is 96th of the year, a new single season program record and he finishes it with a slam. Later, Lowell around the perimeter, Allen Blunt gets it to Everett Hammond who drills the corner three. Riverhawks up 44-26 at the half. Second half, Getty Husapetis. If it's his final game, he's going to leave us with a highlight. Sweet spins here, and it ends with a fadeaway bank right in the D's face. But Lowell would stay ahead. Next possession, here's Hammond going baseline. Bounces it to Max Brooks, who finishes with the jam. Riverhawks would go on to win this one 85-54 to move to the America East semis. Let's stick with the Black Bears for some baseball. Maine visiting Winthrop Saturday in game two of their weekend series. First inning, Third pitch, Quinn McDaniel sees. He says, see you later. Bat flip and all. Second straight game with a homer for McDaniel. one nothing Black Bears. Bottom two, man on second for the Eagles. Nick Badillo lines one to left, and it gets down. Ramsey's Cordova is going to score. We are tied at one. How about Colin Fitzgerald, though? He would go six innings, one earned run, and four strikeouts. The sophomore kept it tied into the seventh. But in the seventh, though, 3-1 Eagles with bases loaded and Ty Hooks rolls one into left. That'll score two. It's 5-1 Winthrop. Eagles would hold the lead and beat Maine 6-2. Okay, let's go to some other scores from the area now. Missouri beats Maine softball 10-0. In Division Three baseball, Husson beats uh, Dominican 8-3. And in the Class B North Regional Semifinals, Mesolonsky defeats Presque Isle 3-2. They go to the Regional Final to face off against Hamden Academy. And in Division III Softball, Husson defeats Calvin 5-4. That's all the time we have for sports. I'm Ryan Sudall. We'll be back right after the break. 
come see us at R&K Variety in Hamden. R&K Variety is more than just a convenience store. With delicious homemade food made fresh daily, we offer hearty meals that don't break the bank. Whether it be our delicious chicken pot pie, our famous lasagna, or one of our savory soups, you can't go wrong at R&K Variety. Looking for a drink after work? R&K Variety is an agency liquor store with an impressive selection. R&K Variety, more than just a convenience store. We're your neighbor, chef, barista, and friend. Stop by today. What can your John Deere compact tractor do? Attachments for any job. Financing that's as easy as... Like getting a library card. Affordable. You're going to get this bigger tractor, and it's going to be less money. Dependable. Through the rain, through the snow, I'll work through it all. Comfortable. And I haven't any idea how we survive without it. Experience United and build a tractor package customized for you. Bucksport Regional Health Center has cared for the community for almost 50 years. We are trusted and compassionate providers. We have also given thousands of COVID-19 vaccines because the COVID-19 vaccine is very safe, very effective, and your best shot at protecting yourself from COVID. Trust us. Trust the vaccine. Protect yourself. Take your shot against COVID-19. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. Well, AAA says gas prices last week were a bit cheaper than the previous week, despite rising slightly midweek. The national average cost for a gallon of gas is around $3.37, but drivers could be in store for a price hike. I know I definitely saw a lot of rates yeah. higher than that around southern Maine over the weekend. The Auto Club says when producers switch to more expensive blended gasoline over the summer, the cost of gas may inch upward. The blend is intended to lower emissions during the summer vacation season when a lot more people are on the road because it's more expensive to refine. The changeover to the summer blend is expected to add about five cents, five to ten cents a gallon to the price of gasoline. And isn't that blend generally yeah. not as good for our cars? Is that, do you know? I have no idea. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Ethanol? Anything, I, I if you have ethanol in it, it's right. not good on um, small engines and right. things like that. It kind of wears away all the rubber parts, gotcha. and gaskets, and things like that. Huh. I don't know. Blurry. Hey, let's get right into the weather forecast. Looks like maybe a little snow today. Things will certainly be windy, too. And Here's Devin. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices. With locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. We're right, going to get things rolling after this morning. A winter weather advisory is posted along the, the northeastern parts of the state until about 5 p.m. for accumulating snow. They'll be moving in from the northeast to the south and west. That may cause some travel issues in a few spots. Wind advisory is also posted. And a few spots soon until 5 p.m. this evening as well. Because the gusty winds up to 40 miles per hour, that will be possible in a few areas. We also have gale warnings up. Some of these expire at 4 p.m. Other spots, though, as we push the map around, expiring at midnight tonight. Same with a small crowd advisory for that little spot right there. So again, the ocean will be rather active because of the gusty winds that will be setting up shop. And they're already active now. Two to ten foot wave heights being noted out there this morning. We'll see the wave heights staying rather active throughout the daytime period. With this area of low pressure that's on for the north and east, that's going to be sending some snow in here this morning. With the warming temperatures, we might see this switch over to a little bit of rain from time to time as well. As all this off for the north and east continues to develop, and it's looking rather active out there. There's that area, there's that area of low pressure there. It's going to be kind of sitting and spinning here for the next few days. So that's why we will have daily chances for rain and snow showers, at least for most of this week moving forward. So with that right there, other action across the Midwest showing some snow developing in areas like Wisconsin out there this this morning. So futurecast moving forward, we're going to have some snow moving in today, maybe mixing in with a little bit of rain from time to time. We'll have some dry hours, maybe some sunshine peeking out as well. And then we'll press repeat, more clouds moving in, chances for snow maybe mixing in with rain from time to time as we head towards the Tuesday. And then we'll get, a, we'll get a little bit of a break. And then we press repeat again as we head towards Tuesday night into Wednesday with more waves of precipitation that will be moving in from time to time. Snow accumulations, nothing ridiculous. So you might notice a little bit more in the northern parts of the state, but not as much further down to the south. But anything that does fall will not last very long with temperatures. I'll be above freezing. Upper 30s today, rain and snow showers on the way with that northwest wind getting up to about 
about 40 miles per hour. By tonight, 23 degrees, snow showers and breezy out there. Northwest wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. And tomorrow, mid 30s, rain and snow showers again. North wind backing off to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Scott's Recreation extended forecast. Mostly cloudy for the day on Wednesday. Highs in the low 40s. More rain and snow showers possible Thursday. Highs in the low 40s. Upper 30s on Friday with a partly cloudy sky. Leona Mays Antique and Gift Shop is now open in Newport. Our unique building is a converted 1800 single family home that we've given a new life to. A home for treasures, from antiques, collectibles, unique gifts, and so much more. Come make the rounds throughout the many rooms on all three floors as you wander back in time or find a unique gift that's perfect for that special someone or that hard to buy for a relative. So come visit us today. Leona Mays Antique and Gift Shop, 147 Main Street, Newport. Start your outdoor adventures in Orno this weekend. The Eastern Maine Sportsman Show is back Friday through Sunday at the University of Maine Fieldhouse. This show is for everyone who loves the great outdoors, even kids like me. Fishing, hunting, or camping, it's all here. See boats, dogs, and fishing lures. The displays are really cool. You can shoot a bow and arrow or watch dogs jump in the pool. Find more info online. Come to the Eastern Maine Sportsman Show this weekend. Then get outdoors with your family. Being diagnosed with a terminal illness is a difficult and scary thing to hear. Hospice made it manageable. She kind of felt, I think, like that she was giving up once we called hospice. But the truth of it was, I think they actually bought us more time. Hear from a widow and a social worker who helped break down the negative stigmas associated with end-of-life care. To help manage symptoms, help support patients and families is really crucial. Tune in tonight on ABC7 News at 6. You two want to know the sex of the baby? Yes. No. Don't look. The Good Doctor is Monday's feel-good hit. My job is to mentor and teach you how to be a good doctor. The Good Doctor, new tonight on ABC and stream on Hulu. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. Cookbooks aren't just useful for helping you make tastier meals. They can also provide a big boost to your bank account. But generally speaking, only the old ones offer that second benefit. In fact, old cookbooks could be worth a small fortune. A collection expert says the value of an old cookbook hinges on its historical value, nostalgia, unique recipes, artistic value, investment value, and celebrity status. So be sure to do a little research before you throw away or give away any of your old cookbooks. Well, you know, I was given a bunch of old cookbooks way yeah. back when. I've never used them. They're great to, gifts. You uh, should check uh, that out. Check it out, yeah. I know, you could be sitting on all sorts of stuff. I always wonder, too, do we have any lucky pennies that could right. be worth money that yeah. we just don't know about? I don't know. Well, that's all for now, folks. We'll continue broadcasting on Fox 22. Have a great day. If you're a Medicare beneficiary and live in the area, call now to see how this little card could get you some big benefits, including up to $840 added back to your Social Security check each year. With one toll-free call, you can find out how easy it is to get all of your original Medicare coverage plus extra benefits. You get an all-in-one plan designed to fit your needs so you can be your best every day. You could have medical coverage, prescription drugs with $0 generics, dental, vision and hearing, plus the WellCare Visa Flex card to pay for extra dental, vision and hearing expenses, money for over-the-counter items, and up to $840 back in your Social Security check each year. And so much more. And here's more good news. You can get a WellCare plan for a $0 monthly premium. How can WellCare offer all of those benefits for a $0 monthly premium? It's simple. Medicare Advantage and Medicare Part D prescription drug coverage are important parts of Medicare. WellCare has a contract.